this video is meant for people who want to you know build their own system their uh, solution to day to day problems using the arduino board now why you should use the arduino board this we have already seen in the previous video so now in this we will see how to choose the correct arduino for your requirements now when you are building your system you naturally depending on what is the application that you are building or what is the problem that you are trying to solve based on that the requirements will change for example if you are building a very simple system wherein you are just controlling one parameter and then you are going to give give the output as also one parameter naturally this system will be a very simple uh, system and the arduino required for this will be the uh, smallest or having the least specifications whereas if you are building a very high end system where you are you know processing you are having multiple uh, inputs say you are having audio input you are having a video you are also having text then in that case naturally the number of variables that you are going to control the number of variables that you are going to process then similarly the number of uh, outputs that you are going to give to the user are going to change so naturally for such a big bigger system you will need a, a different type of arduino board now the arduino boards are available in a vast uh, spectrum depending on the specifications the but when you are selecting your arduino board for people like you know who are just starting to use the arduino board we are going to provide you with three simple uh, boards which are most widely used currently and those are the arduino uno arduino mini and arduino mega now out of these three boards how do you select the one that will suit your requirements or how do you select a board which will fit your problem solution so when you are selecting this board naturally what you should look at are some basic specifications some eight basic specifications i will uh, tell you about which you need to look at so the most important specification here is the processor that is used in the arduino board why the processor is very important i think most of you must be aware of like in our body as i had mentioned earlier the brain is the most important part so naturally best the brain best the functions that it performs right so similarly when you are building your system if you are selecting the processor naturally uh, sorry if you are selecting the arduino board the processor is the most important part because it is going to control the other things even in the processors what you need to look at is what is the bit size of the processor that is very important because the processing speed and how many uh, parameters or how many uh, instructions the processor can execute in one cycle it depends on the type of the processor or the number of bits the processor is you must have heard about a 8 bit processor a 16 bit processor 32 bit processor 64 bit 128 and so on so the processors they always come with a bit size which is a multiple of 2 so it is always 2 raised to n where n is 1 2 3 4 and so on so depending on the application for a very small application you may select a 8 bit processor for a high end you may go up to 128 now why this a processor is again important is because if you are having only one variable to be processed naturally this low end processor with a 8 bit uh, capacity word size is okay but uh, look at the example for example if you are uh, processing a video input or you are processing say uh, n number of variables then in that case what will happen is if you select a low end processor naturally if you are writing the code you are making it work it may work but 
you may not get the output which you desire to be and not in the time that you desire to be so because of this what will what may happen is that your system may function but you will not get what you exactly want out of the system okay so the first parameter that you should look at when you are selecting the board is the processor now these three boards they have uh, the atmega processor there are also other processors which are available so the other parameter that you need to look at when you are uh, selecting your board is the cpu speed now why this cpu speed is important again ba based on the cpu speed you will be getting your processing speed and depending on your application you can just select the particular processor <clears throat> then the third parameter is the operating voltage now when you are uh, building your system as we said the embedded system now in any of the embedded system one of the major factor that we look at is that the system has to be portable now when we say portable system naturally these systems need to work on batteries we cannot always connect them to the ac supply that is available uh, in our homes or at other places so when we say embedded it has to be a battery operated now when we say battery operated naturally the most important thing that comes to our mind is the efficiency right or the power consumption of that battery or that system so suppose like we say whenever we buy a mobile phone we go for a mobile phone what we talk ask about is what is the, uh, what is the talk time when we say talk time basically what we are looking at is technically we are looking at the power consumption of the mobile phone so lower the power consumption of the mobile phone when you are talking naturally higher will be the talk time so this is valid for any embedded system so you build any system if it has to be battery operated the power consumption is the most important factor then the next parameter is naturally the uh, the inputs and the outputs like i mentioned if you are building a very small system which has got say one input one output naturally you will go for the <coughs> arduino board having lower number of inputs again in the inputs there are two types that is analog and the digital now suppose you want to sense something which is coming in the analog form okay right? then that means if you are directly connecting some analog uh, variable that is something which is happening naturally around us you are measuring something say a temperature which is in the analog form or a pressure which is in the analog form then you will need a arduino having the analog inputs and the uh, outputs but if you are uh, then uh, suppose you are sensing something which is in analog form but you are okay for converting it into digital then naturally to the arduino you are going to give a digital input so na naturally what is the difference if you are connecting our analog directly you can connect to the analog pin of the arduino board you need not have this signal conditioning which is conditioning your analog signal to the digital signal whereas if you are using the digital inputs of your arduino naturally whatever parameters if they are in the analog form you will have to convert first them to the digital and then connect to your uh, arduino so that is the main difference similarly the outputs so outputs can be either in the analog or digital but these three boards they are not providing the uh, analog outputs only the digital outputs are provided so these digital outputs then you can connect to the output devices like your say if you want to display something you can connect to a either a, a seven segment display you can connect to a led or you can connect to a crt monitor or you can connect to a lcd monitor and so on and so forth so these are the different so the next specification like i mentioned are the number of inputs and outputs and again in input and output whether it is analog or digital so the next specification that we look at for, for the arduino board is the memory now again memory uh, there are three types that is one is the eprom then the sdram and the flash now why this size of the eprom matters because this is the place or this is a memory wherein you are going to actually burn the code this is the language which is used for the embedded system we burn the code of the system burn means we put whatever uh, application we have developed whatever code we have written we put it in the memory now once you put it in that particular memory that is a eprom it will stay in that memory as long as you want it to 
but of course initially there were proms which were not erasable but now eprom is electrically erasable read only memory so this is a memory from where your processor is going to read the code then decode these codes and then execute those codes codes of instructions right now uh, so naturally lower the size of the eprom your application that you are going to build has to be a smaller size suppose you choose a arduino uno which has a lower eprom um, but the application that you are trying to build has lot of lines of course naturally this won't work so there has to be a match between the lines of codes that you are writing for your application for your solution and the size of the eprom then there are this sd ram and flash which are used for as the external memories so basically flash is a memory which is accessed by the processor externally means so uh, why this external memory is uh, matters is because the speed so the higher the external memory naturally the processor is going to access the memory externally so the number of Uh, cycles required for the access increases and the speed is compromised so these are the three uh, memory uh, components that are important when while you are selecting the arduino and then uh, another two parameters that you should you should look at is the usb port and the uart now there are some systems for which you may not need these at all your system will work very fine even if these two Uh, features are not provided by the arduino for example the uh, simple watering system is a system wherein you have just one parameter you are measuring it and you are controlling something externally with that uh, parameter for that you need not have a usb or a uart but suppose you are uh, you want to send this parameter on your mobile phone or suppose you want to Uh, transmit your uh, data from the system externally you may transmit it over a serial port so for in that case you need to have this uh, ur that is a universal asynchronous transmitter receiver so this transmitter receiver is required if your system has to communicate electronically with something else outside right so that that time this usb and the ur they play a very important role so if you want to send a sms for example suppose some parameter here varies beyond a certain range and then you want to send a uh, sms to the user that okay there is some problem in the system then in that case the usb plays a important role and then we will be seeing later that to this usb port you can connect different uh, shields you can connect different extensions which can be uh, you know improve the cap uh, capacity or capabilities of your system similarly the uart is useful when you are you want to transmit and receive uh, the parameters and specifications so these are the eight very very important uh, specifications that you should look at whenever you are selecting your arduino board now once you have decided upon it then you can just go and uh, get your arduino board and start working that's all